Who leads you? I believe kings were meant to be like oceans. The greatest bodies reflecting all that is shown before them. If we look, we should see ourselves. The mighty waves changing the masses we crash upon. But we have stopped appearing in the waters. Instead, wishing to see ourselves within the screens we stare at. And the glossiness of our gaze becomes more plastic than our activism hashtags, more frivolous than our followers that give us the purpose we strive for, which is to just be seen. Competitions with the loudest data begging for our attention, bombarded by bright smiles, expelling dim lights. Our minds get governed by the quickest tongue, gabbing away all the oxygen so that their presence occupies our breath, occupies momentum, occupies progression. And now, what leads you? Since something has been lost, since our last great leaders last led, since we last stood and marched and prayed, since we last sacrificed bodies, gave into hunger, gave into the silence, and collectively breathed for a cause beyond ourselves, Gandhi has since left us with work to do. Since he last mapped out the blueprint for peace, for aggressively unballing clenched fists wrapped tightly around our human traumas and the wars, we still seek to engage in, refusing to let go of our triggers that trigger bloodshed, that make more triggers, that make more trauma. We now seek to feed our gut, to keep us distracted by bloat, content with media benders because who cares what's happening in the streets when there's so much to watch on Netflix? Why become the subject of change when I can just change the channel? When I can just swipe away or block or mute? It's now so easy to look away. So now, who is leading you? When I feel we have forgotten what our leaders stood for, but we still stand on ladders posting posters on our walls of Malcolm with fingers on his shotgun or fingers on his crow's feet or finger pointed outward. I too had the poster. We treat Malcolm like a poser, costuming in his essence like it's Halloween, but we don't dress in his received bomb threats. We don't wear the terror his family felt. We don't pass out candy to children dressed in self-sacrifice. Instead, we sacrifice our children to this world we live in, placing the burden of change on their shoulders because we are tired, we have marched, we have protested, we as people have bled enough, and then we bought the t-shirt and made a small donation and tagged a friend to buy the bumper sticker so that we may honk when we see you in traffic, swearing at our brothers and sisters and all those in the middle, but we are still the children of those that demanded we carry on. We are the dreams that were once dreamt. We are the legacies of those that burned into ash, into forgotten, hidden away from history. So we have to continue on the forked paths they paved, seek out the roads they set within our bloodstream, remember their avenues of tread within our minds or else who leads you? Every now and then, we get an Aikida who raises their head within the sea of sheep to ask a question that tips the scale in favor of our much needed growth and evolution. The question reverberates within their beingness and they become change. They become the example. They become the yes we follow as if life has formed a neon sign pointing in a single direction attached to our hearts. Of course, we are guided. We are led on what to believe, how how to think, how to breathe. We see what beingness can be and we choose to just let them be. But Dr. King and Malcolm and Gandhi and Dr. Aikida did not want us to follow. They wanted us to be and to be different in all that we are, all that we do so that the leaders we follow 
are not just them. It is also us. Mm.